All right. Welcome back to another episode of The Productivity Show. My name is Brooks Duncan. I'm the CEO of Asian Efficiency and the co-host of The Productivity Show. Uh, my co-host here is Tan, the CEO of Asian Efficiency. Uh, how are you doing, Tan? Well, today we're talking about how to be more energetic towards the end of the day. And as we are recording this, it is towards the end of the day. And uh, before we started recording, I was telling Brooks how I'm feeling a little tired just because I finished a really brutal workout. And right now in Austin, Texas, it's like 100 degrees and it's super humid. So just walking home, it's like a 10 minute walk where the gym is, uh, was like a, a sweaty workout in itself. Plus uh, the workout that I did right after that uh, was a bunch of deadlifts and, and hangs. So I'm just a little tired right now, but I'm going to implement all the stuff that we're going to be teaching here today so that I still have a little bit more energy because I have a bunch of things I have to do after the podcast. So this is a very appropriate episode for me today as well. Yep. Same here. I'm as we're recording, I'm in the middle of writing a very large blog post uh, with lots of stuff going on. So uh, I was kind of flagging there for a bit. So I'm going to also be using the the tips in this episode. So this, like you said, this is a super timely episode, which we're going to get into right now. But before we do, we always like to start every single episode with our top three resources. So these are three things that we're loving these days or members of the community or productivity show listeners have let us know they're loving and we want to pass it on to you. So the first one is a book. It's called How to Have a Good Day. Harness the Power of Behavioral Science to Transform Your Working Life by Carolyn Webb. And this is quite a large book, but one thing I like about it is it's just huge in its breadth. So it covers all sorts of areas of productivity. So if you want to make sure you have a good day, uh, it, I listen to it on the audiobook, but my wife has the paper copy as well. And it's a great overview of all sorts of different facets of productivity and using it to improve your day, your work and personal life. So that's number one. Number two is the Aura Ring. And Tan, I know this is something you're loving a lot. And that is a tracker slash, I don't even know how to describe it, but it is a ring. So it's not a, like a smart watch. It's not distracting or anything like that. It's just a ring you wear on your finger and it gives you all sorts of information about your sleep, your activity, your uh, readiness, how you're feeling. Uh, and it's if you want to use this information to improve your energy, it's a great tool to use for that. And number three is an app that I know both of us use is called Calm. So Calm is a meditation app, but it also has information on improving your sleep. It has focus music and focus, focus tools. It does a lot more than just meditation. Uh, and I've used it for years and years and years. They're a recent sponsor of the Productivity Show, but they are not sponsoring this specific episode as far as I know. Uh, so uh, I think it's safe to include them as part of our top three resources. Uh, all right, Tan. So you've already established that you're <laughs> that you're a little uh, under the under the energy bar. So hopefully by the end of this episode, uh, you'll have some tools to bring back up. And really, that's what this episode is for. So if you have the if you tend to have the energy drop off near the end of the workday, maybe you flag in the afternoons, maybe you don't feel that you can accomplish everything you want to by the end of the day, uh, this episode is going to be for you. Maybe you can make it through the workday okay, usually the, the working part's time, but maybe by the time you get home, like, boom, you crash and you're not able to do anything else or, or the things you would like to do anyway. Or maybe your energy is okay, but you always want to be making improvements. You want to go from strength to strength and uh, you can use some of the strategies we're going to talk about to do that. Atan, maybe you can tell us about uh, next episode because I know it's a conversation that uh, you've had recently. Yeah. So we, next week we have Jeffrey Madoff on the show and his whole talk on the show is all about how to fuel creativity. So this is the guy behind the scenes who shot commercials for Ralph Lauren and Victoria's Secret and lots of other big brands. So uh, if you're interested in fueling your creativity, you definitely don't want to miss this episode. All right. So like I said, we're going to be talking about how to have energy at the end of the day, but I guess we should really define what end of the day means in this context, because we've done a lot of energy episodes over the years. Uh, so what we're specifically talking about is, you know, maybe you wanted to work on a project after work and you knew what you or at work really, and you knew what you needed to do and you even had the time to do it. And then you come home and then you just crash out. You're, you're too tired to work on it. And then you move it to another day. And then this cycle just repeats and repeats. And 
maybe that is uh, something that happens in the afternoon. Like maybe when you structure your day, you always think to yourself, I'm going to get this important task done near the end of the day. But by the time the afternoon rolls around, uh, you're just you're just too tired to do it. Uh, so our goal is to help you get through the end of that workday with your energy intact and help you be present and energetic in the evening. So maybe you want to have energy for a side hustle that you do outside of work. Maybe you want to have energy to be present with your family. Maybe they, your, your uh, significant other or your kids want to do activities, but you just want to crash on the, on the sofa and, uh, and uh, watch Netflix or something like that. Maybe you want to have energy for a hobby that is something completely different from your work to help you be balanced. And so we're going to help you do that. And by the way, when we talk about energy, uh, really that term could mean different things to different people. It could be actual physical energy, like we've been talking about so far, uh, but it could also relate to you feeling energized. So having that enthusiasm and enjoyment for what you're, what you're doing. So you maybe want to do it, but so that in the moment you have that enthusiasm and enjoyment. And we're going to be touching on strategies strategies to help with both. Uh, now, Tan, we talk about the T framework on the podcast a lot, and energy is an important co component of that. Uh, maybe you can break down how this kind of interacts with the T framework and helps with that. Sure. So I think if you've been listening to us for a while, you probably have heard us talk about this, right? So T stands for time, energy, and attention. This is kind of like our productivity framework for being more productive, just like you have GTD, 12-week year, and other things. So our approach is a lot more holistic, right? So it's really about your life, your lifestyle, and things you can do to improve yourself. And when it comes to energy, if you feel like you're exhausted very often, you feel like you have very little energy, it's very difficult to be productive. You could have all the right tools in place. You could have the time to do the things you want to do. But if you feel tired or you feel exhausted, guess what? Nothing is going to happen. So that's why energy is so important. And what I've seen with a lot of people who come to us, oftentimes they come to us because they have very little time. So they want to free up time. And once you kind of get good at doing that and you maximize how you work your schedule and create time freedom in your life, oftentimes the next step up is to address the energy in your life. So this could be like sleeping more, right? Eating healthier, exercising more often and so on. And I know a lot of people who are listening always struggle with this idea of, okay, I want to get stuff done after work, but I somehow can't figure out how to make that happen. And they think that they have a time or focus problem when in fact, it's not that it's actually an energy problem. So we've done lots of episodes on energy, the topic itself. So you can always go to uh, episode two, uh, 358, I believe. So if you go to theproductivityshow.com slash 358, we start diving deeper into just energy as a topic in itself as part of our framework. So if you're new to us, go check out that episode, right? So what we're not going to cover today is stuff like sleep and naps. We've talked a hundred different times on this particular topic because you know, this is really important, right? And so we don't want to repeat ourselves here. And we're also not going to be talking about drinking coffee or tea. It's kind of a, a band-aid for a lot of people. Uh, we're going to be talking other things you can do to make sure you have more energy towards the end of the day. Now, I will say uh, Brooks is not a doctor. He's actually a former CPA. So it's like the complete opposite, right? Uh, I have no degree whatsoever. I didn't even finish high school. So when it comes to medical advice, this is like the last podcast you want to listen to, okay? But we're just doing this for educational and entertainment purposes and so on. So, yep. uh, and we have a really cool episode, which I know is one of the most popular episodes we've ever done, uh, which is episode 256, uh, and the title is How to Be Productive Through Illness and Recovery. And we have a few guests on there who talk about challenges they had with their health and illnesses and um, handicaps. Uh, and how they deal with that and how they are more productive than a lot of other people in a similar situations. So check out episode 256, the productivity show.com slash 256, uh, because I think you'll really enjoy that episode. All right. So thank you for that, Tanya. Yeah, that is a very popular episode. Uh, but we're going to roll right into our three ways to have energy at the end of the day. And we're going to start with number one, which we've already kind of alluded to a little bit, uh, which is to introduce movement at some time during the day. Now, energy and exercise anytime is helpful, of course. You want to improve and maintain your fitness. If you can do that, you're going to have more energy in general. So whether you get exercise in the morning, the evening, or whenever, that is good. But that's not actually what we're talking about in this tip. What we're specifically talking about is moving your body during the day 
ideally away from your desk, or if you have to do it at your desk, you know, that's better than nothing. But this idea of introducing movement into your day will clear your head, will give you a jolt of energy right when you need it. Because sitting at a desk all day just makes you feel lethargic. We've all been there. Uh, and, you know, we talk about taking breaks a lot. Uh, introducing movement during your break is even better. Like if you want to take a break and uh, rest your brain by surfing social media or something like that, you know, that's okay. But it's even better if you can actually move, get up from your desk, move around and just re-energize yourself that day. So there's lots of things you can do. Uh, you could go for a walk around the office between meetings. Ideally, you could even maybe go for a really quick walk outside. Maybe there's lunchtime yoga class you can do or go for a run or hit the gym. Uh, maybe you could have some exercise or stretching equipment near your desk and use it when you have some free moments. Uh, what you could do, and this is actually something I used to do uh, in my corporate job, is you could, uh, if, you, if you have to go to the washroom, maybe go to the bathroom on different floors of the office building uh, and take the stairs instead of the elevator. So that kind of like forces you to, uh, to just go to uh, get a little bit more exercise instead of walking just a couple of feet to the washroom. Maybe you can walk up or down the stairs. Uh, some other examples. Uh, we record these episodes live with our TPS Plus members and our Dojo members. And Giacomo in the in the live stream says that he tries to like squeeze in 20, 20 push-ups uh, after just to like get the blood flowing. Uh, in a couple episodes ago in TPS 364, we talked about habit stacking. And one of the live stream listeners, Laura, says that uh, what she does is after putting something in the microwave, she does a plank for 30 seconds. So that's a great way to like introduce movement a little bit into, into the day uh, to try to like get that energy going. Uh, we actually have a little mini course in the dojo, which is our productivity community called how to keep good posture and maintain your health while working behind the computer all day. Uh, that topic is a, the title is a bit of a mouthful, but it has some great tips for little exercises you can do. If you're, even if you're like chained to your desk, you can't walk around the office. Maybe you're, you're really busy, but it's ways to like, just bust out a little bit of exercise here and there, uh, just being at your computer. Now, Tan, uh, I know we just talked about that you <laughs> did just do a, uh, a, a crushing workout. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily anything super strenuous or s sweaty. Uh, you know, just getting any sort of movement can help. Uh, and actually, I talked about that, how to have a good day book. Uh, and one quote from it that I really like is uh, she says, exercise isn't time out, it's time invested. And that's the way you want to think about it when you're working exercise or move any sort of movement into your day is think of it as an investment, not taking time away from the stuff you're, you're supposed to be doing. Um, so you mentioned, Tan, that you just exercised before recording. Uh, and you also mentioned that it, we're recording a bit later in the day. Uh, maybe you can talk about your thought process about uh, why you did it uh, now as opposed to other times. Yeah, so I always have a lull. Uh, I don't know about any of you who are listening here, but I usually have a lull later in the day. So if I want to be productive towards the end of the day or later in the day, I like to squeeze in a workout if I can. And uh, we actually are recording this episode on another day than we typically do. And so usually I wouldn't actually be this tired and <laughs> sweaty showing up for a podcast, but because we were recording a bunch uh, in a short time frame, this is typically on another day. But I, uh, I like to do that sort of thing in the afternoon, again, just to kind of give myself a midday break. And one of the things I always like to do is uh, I go to this place here in Austin where they have like hot and cold tubs and an infrared sauna. It's like a recovery center. And so I usually go there midday as well, uh, sometimes at night. Um, but it, when I do go in the midday, I always like to end on the cold tub, which is like maybe 49 Fahrenheit or so. Uh, so it's really cold. And uh, that kind of gives me like a second wind almost to kind of get going for the other parts of my day. And so it doesn't have to be anything crazy like that, right? You can just go for a walk. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, it's one of the reasons, though, why I stopped working out in the morning, because I know that knowing myself, I get my best creative work done in the morning. And so I would almost feel like I'm wasting my precious hours, right? When we talk about time arbitrage, we talk about like how not every hour is, is created equal, meaning uh, the hour between 8 and 9 a.m. in the morning is more valuable to me than say 10 and 11 p.m., right? Because I have more energy, focus, creativity. So I want to get my best work done during that time. And so I don't want them to 
do any sort of workout during that time because I feel most creative and I can still get the same exercise in later in the day, which kind of gives me a second win uh, later in the day as well. So uh, after I'm done recording with this podcast, if I just take like a 10 minute break to kind of get myself sorted, I'll have like another second win to kind of get the stuff done that I need to get done. So I would recommend if you can exercise in the afternoon, that would be ideal. Um, having a standing desk also helps a ton because now instead of sitting, uh, I can start standing and it gives me a sense of movement as well. So as I'm recording this podcast, um, I'm always standing and that's a rule I made for myself. I could have easily done this podcast sitting, but I know standing makes me more animated. It gives me a little bit more energy, gives me a little bit more movements. And that comes across a lot better on the podcast than, you know, just sitting. Also, um, I recently bought an e-bike, uh, Brooks, you haven't seen it yet, uh, cause you haven't been here <laughs> in a while, mm. but, uh, next time you're here, it's, it's a really fun, uh, bicycle essentially that is electric. And so, uh, nowadays I re- like to ride my e-bike, which actually doesn't require much effort cause it has a throttle. So you just like push it and it goes, uh, so it's not really exercise, but it's good enough to kind of get myself going and every now and then I'll pedal. Um, so uh, that's really fun. It kind of gives me a second wind as well. Uh, but on cooler days, I usually like to go for a walk. So again, these are all very simple things. And depending on your lifestyle and what you have around you, uh, there's some things you can incorporate there as well. You mentioned the standing desk, which I also use, and I am also standing uh, for the exact same reason that you said uh, in the live stream, Lee said something interesting. And I've seen this, but I've never used it. So, so he mentioned having a standing desk with a small treadmill. And so I'm sure we've all seen people do that. You sit there working or you not sit there. <laughs> you're there working while you're on walking on the treadmill as well. Uh, so I asked him if that is something he uses and he made an interesting point, which is he used to do that. So he has a standing desk, the same one that I have actually, and which is the fully, uh, fully Jarvis. And he used to have it with the, the treadmill there. And so he could work while walking on the treadmill, but now he, he wants to get away from his desk, which is exactly what I would, what is saying is you in a perfect world ideally you just have that tiny bit of separation so he moved the he moved the treadmill away from the desk so that he can like step away from his computer and take those little breaks on the tread just walking or i don't know if he walks or runs but uh just get away from the the desk to get that kind of break and i thought that was a a great strategy so yeah having a treadmill is kind of like next level over just a standing desk but uh, it's a cool combo All right, so that's tip number one, work movement into your day and ideally do it in an intentional and planned way. Know what you're going to do uh, as a way to break things up. Tip number two is to, this is kind of going a different direction, but it's to break out a breathing and gratitude exercise. And if you can do this or want to do this every single day, go for it. That's, you know, kind of the ideal, but you could also use it tactically if you want, when you need to recharge, if you find that would be helpful as well. It's something that you can break out when you need it. And it basically has two sets simple components. You can do them together if you want, or you can do them separately, whichever works best for you. Number one is a breathing exercise. So pause what you're doing in the moment, take one or more, you know, some people say take four, some people take, say, take eight, you know, whatever it is. Some people say, just do one, you know, whatever works for you. Take a deep abdominal breath and then slowly uh, exhale. This will help you get mentally out of whatever you have going on and refocus it. Because sometimes when we're when we're in the middle of working on something, uh, you know, we just start dragging down because our, our brains are just like are, are just in a, a cycle where we're we're trying to focus, we're trying to think, uh, or we're like upset about an email we we read and it's demotivating, uh, something like that. So just a, a simple breathing exercise can have a lot of knock-on effects for your energy. It'll just refocus you and you can get going. And then the other component is a gratitude exercise where you just stop and think of three things or three people that you're grateful for, or it could be about three good things that have happened to you lately. Or if you don't even want to do gratitude, you could do like three funny things. The idea is to get your brain in a positive space. Uh, and gratitude is really, really helpful for that. And because our, our brains just tend to get dragged down into what's going on at the moment. So these breathing and gratitude exercises kind of snaps you out of the the negative mental spiral, which can really tank your energy. Uh, And then you just feel more 
grateful and uh, feel better and feel energized after. Uh, you're, you're more likely to want to do the things that you are working on when you recenter yourself using that breathing and, uh, and gratitude. You know, ter- turns out thinking about good things is actually good for you and helpful. Like who, <laughs> who knew? Uh, do you ever use any of these strategies, Tam? Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, breathing exercises. So one thing I've learned is that exhaling longer than inhaling will help you engage the parasympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic nervous system is the part of our body that kind of focuses on uh, recovery and resting. So that's where most of us kind of want to head towards, right? Uh, Most of us actually engage the sympathetic nervous system, which is kind of like all that go, 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 and like making sure we're active and expending energy as much as possible. But none of us really spend enough time engaging the parasympathetic nervous system, which is really what we want. So in order to kind of start engaging that, you can exhale longer than you do inhaling. So whatever type of breathing exercise you do, you could do like four seconds in, six seconds out, that will help you engage the parasympathetic nervous system. And you can kind of Google this Uh, So there's a lot of science behind it. Uh, Another thing you could do, and this is kind of like an advanced thing, is uh, I'm wearing an Apollo Neuro, which is a wearable device. And uh, it basically changes your mood by um, sending you auditory uh, vibrations that you can't hear. And then what it does is it will engage your parasympathetic nervous system. So as I was about to record this podcast, because I just finished my workout, uh, I opened up the app, which is connected to my phone and then connected to this device. And I said, I need like an uh, intense recovery. And so now it's vibrating at a certain frequency that engage my parasympathetic nervous system to go, hey, we need to rest tan. He needs to relax. Like he just finished a really hard workout. So make sure we engage the parasympathetic nervous system. So I don't have to do any sort of breathing exercises. The vibrations kind of do it. And what it's trying to mimic essentially is like giving you a hug. So you feel really uh, like warm and relaxed and that's essentially what it's trying to accomplish so that's a little bit more of an advanced thing it's about 300 dollars, and in my opinion totally worth it i've seen it engaged and improve my uh, hrv uh, both real time and also during my sleep so i love this thing i've talked about it at nauseam if you've been listening to us for a while so i highly recommend you check that out as well but if you don't have an apollo neuro again the breathing exercise i think is the most powerful One tip for gratitude, if you want to make it more impactful, is instead of of expressing gratitude for specific people, especially the people in your life, uh, try to express it for specific things that those people did or specific situations. So for example, you know, if you have a family, if you have kids, then you almost feel like, you know, you say, oh, I'm grateful for my grateful for my spouse or I'm grateful for my kids. And then you almost feel like (laughs) you almost feel like you, you have to, like you're, you're, you're not being a good family member if you don't uh, express gratitude. So, and then what happens is it kind of loses its meaning because of of course you're grateful for your family. And it's the same thing that actually, this is something, uh, a suggestion I'm, I'm going to make company wide too is, uh, we always end our meetings, our sprint meetings and our uh, other meetings with a, a round table of gratitude, we call it. And what happens is as soon as somebody says, oh, I'm grateful for my teammates or I'm grateful for Tan, then what happens is everybody starts saying, oh yeah, I'm grateful for my teammates or, or everybody starts saying, oh yeah, I'm grateful for Tan. Uh, where it would be, I think it would be more impactful if we said, I'm grateful for our teammates for doing this or I'm grateful for my kids for doing that or I'm grateful for Tan for doing this. Then it kind of, it shakes you out of the routine and it makes it more impactful. Uh, so that's a, that's a little hack for, for expressing gratitude and make it more impactful and not just something that you kind of like think, but don't really think too much about what you're saying. But Brooks, I I need that level of encouragement (laughs) every time we have that meeting though. New company rule, no gratitude to Tan (laughs) is really what I was trying to say. I think that's a, I think that's a great idea just again to be very specific right so if uh, if you use something like the five minute journal uh it will ask you like hey what are you grateful for today and if you start to notice you always write the same thing i wouldn't say that's necessarily a bad thing um oh. but like you were saying it's you can kind of become numb to it after a while and then you don't become as grateful to it all right so that is tip number two tip number three is to try and eat 
and snack if you're a snacker intentionally throughout the day. And the key word there is intentionally, because it's not just physical energy that's impacted by food. It's your mental energy as well. We're not going to like talk about specific diets or specific foods necessarily. There's so much conflicting information out there and what works for one people doesn't necessarily work for another. So we're not going to like get into specific diets and that sort of thing. Um, but some general tips and principles that work for many people. Uh, number one is to try and not to have a big well, heavy anything, especially carb heavy, but heavy anything, uh, meal throughout the day if you can avoid it. It just knocks you down later. Uh, maybe you've had like a big pasta dish for lunch and you've probably experienced this before. Uh, so try not to have those big, heavy meals throughout the day. If you want to do that later for whatever reason, you know, go ahead. But throughout the day, it is just going to like suck your energy out later. Another thing we recommend is to plan what you're going to eat throughout the day. Uh, if you don't, if you don't know ahead of time what you're going to eat for your lunch and your snacks, if you are a snacker, then what's going to happen is you're just going to go for whatever eat is easiest and be opportunistic. Uh, which, if there happens to be a bowl of apples sitting there, that's great. Uh, but if it happens to be like. Uh, Janice brought donuts into the lunchroom, then you're more likely uh, to be tempted to grab that versus the, the snack or the food that you already had planned. Um, because the more intentional you are about eating, uh, the less you're going to be likely to make those kind of like less than ideal choices. Uh, and then if you are a snacker, try to have small snacks throughout the day that aren't sugary and processed. Uh, the occasional thing is okay, of course, obviously, but um, try as best as you can to be intentional with your food. And that will really help your energy and avoid those like energy suckers that go throughout the day. Um, now I have a question for you, Tan. Do you have any go-tos for things that you eat during the day? Maybe it's your meals or maybe it's snacks. I don't know uh, that, or things you drink or something like that, that help maintain your energy. Oh yeah. This is a more of an advanced thing, but beet juice uh, is one of those things that improves your uh, cardio. So this is something I learned from studying uh, professional NBA players. So a lot of professional NBA players use this supplement called Beat Elite. Uh, so it's B-E-T, B-E-E-T, and then Elite uh, by Human to the Power of Two is the name of the company. I think they're based in Austin, Texas too. But it's called Beat Elite. And uh, a lot of players take it because it helps them with their endurance. And so I don't recommend taking this late at night because uh, I've made that mistake one time where I had the supplement taken for the first time and I was like, it was maybe seven or eight o'clock at night. And I was like, oh, let me try this. Uh, and I forgot what I was thinking about what this actually does. I was like, I just want to see if it would actually taste good. So I took it and I could not sleep that night. <laughs> I was just so wide awake. Uh, so it doesn't have any caffeine or anything, but there's just something about beet juice that makes you go like you're just really mentally focused and sharp and you have more uh, cardio and endurance. So highly recommend checking it out. I sometimes take it before a workout. I should have taken it today uh, had I known it was such an intense workout that I just had. So be the lead is something you want to check out. But other than that, uh, you know, we already mentioned like caffeine, like we don't really talk about coffee and tea here, but that's always something that you can use. Uh, but if, I think for me, when it comes to strategy around eating and snacking, uh, what I found to be the most productive is to eat twice a day. So um, I don't necessarily always do intermittent fasting, which is kind of the idea of like fasting for 16 hours and eating or eating in an eight hour window, right? So sometimes people go from 12 to eight, that's when they eat. And then they kind of skip breakfast the next day. Um, I do like that strategy, but I don't always adhere to it. But I do like the idea of just eating twice a day because I don't spend a lot of time wasting like eating quote unquote, uh, but also when I know when I can eat in, uh, during my day, I can kind of maximize how I schedule things. So that's why, for example, when I wake up, I do my deep work. And then once most of my deep work is done, that's when I'll eat. And uh, I think the timing is really important too, because if you reverse it, meaning you eat first and then do your deep work, it doesn't tend to go well because your brain is just, or your body is just like processing food and it doesn't. Uh, allow you to be creative or use the energy you have for the things that you want to do. Because the first thing the body will do as a survival thing is to process foods. Like that's where all the energy and focus will go. And so you don't want to eat something and then do deep work. That 
that sequence just never is a good idea. It's kind of like if you do a big meal before you start working out, that's usually never a good idea either for so many reasons, right? Like if you ever had like stomach aches or something right before, uh, right when you had a workout and you ate before, like that kind of feeling is never great. Uh, I feel like it's the same for any sort of focus work that you want to do. So I think timing is really important, like eat after some deep work. Um, and then I, I would say, less snacking just because you allow your mind to just stay sharp and just focus on what's what's uh you know what's in front of you so again everyone's a little different right so that's just my main strategy is to eat twice a day because uh, one is time efficient but also two i can kind of plan around that yeah i was thinking about as you're talking about that i was thinking about the last time i visited you in austin and uh, you took me to some well-known restaurant i can't remember the name of it where they had these gigantic pork chops, I think it was. <laughs> and we ate this like ridiculous lunch and we had structured our day uh, and the, and our sessions together that, that, you know, that we weren't going to be doing any deep work after that. Uh, so it, we kind of crashed us, but if we weren't intentional, uh, if we had decided we were going to go back and re record a podcast or, you know, plan our quarter or something like that after that meal, it just would not have worked. So you gotta be, you gotta be super intentional, especially if you're eating gigantic pork chops. Uh, yeah. So that place uh, for anyone who ever visits Austin, uh, it's called Perry's. It's a, it's a steakhouse and they're known for their pork chop Fridays. So it's this huge pork chop and it's delicious. And, uh, it's just so much. It's like the best lunch deal in town on Friday. So it's always packed. And, uh, yeah, you definitely can't, get any work done. Like anytime you're here, Brooks, like barbecue is done in the evenings, not for lunch because after barbecue, there's just nothing else to do. And so one thing I've learned from watching a lot of strongman videos is again, such a random thing, but uh, I've studied a lot of strongmen. So people who compete to be the strongest man in the world. And uh, I was watching a bunch of videos of like what they do on a day-to-day -day basis to train and what they eat and so on. And what they all had in common was uh, they eat like sometimes eight, 10,000 calories a day, which is a, a ton of food, right? And what they all have in common is that anytime they finish a meal, they always go for a 10, 15 minute walk. Uh, why? Because it helps the digestion process. And so if you just sit still and just let the body process foods, it's apparently not as efficient uh, compared to when you go for a 10, 15 minute walk, it helps speed up the metabolism and the digestive process. And also it helps the uh, athletes stay focused and sharp instead of just kind of like sitting and relaxing and kind of falling asleep and digesting just food. Right. So uh, if you do have a big meal, like a pasta or something like a pork chop that Brooks just mentions, uh, if you are in that situation, then go for a 10, 15 minute walk right away uh, to kind of help digest it and put it down uh, and then go back to work. So consider doing that next time. All right. So we're wrapping it up. Members of the live stream have been sharing some energy tips. Giacomo shared uh, five minutes of rope skipping, which is really powerful. Uh, he also shared one that <laughs> I definitely hadn't thought of before, which is to punch a cushion or screaming. <laughs> so he says it uh, looks kind of weird, but it actually really, really works. It relieves tension and mental blocks. Uh, and it's, uh, he says it's mind blowing. So I'm not sure you'd want to do that at your desk at work. Uh, but uh, there you go. If you're ever needing an energy break and you can get away with it, try punching a cushion or screaming uh, might uh, might help you out. Uh, so uh, screaming aside, Tan, if somebody wants to improve their energy throughout the day and maybe wants to go end with uh, or go with one strategy to get started, we usually don't recommend implementing everything all at once. But if it wants to start with one thing, uh, what uh, what might that be? So based on this episode, what I would recommend you do starting today, ideally, or maybe even tomorrow what can you do to introduce a midday movement? So remember, it's not about exercise necessarily, but more about movements. How can you introduce more movement in your day? Whether that is today or tomorrow, just start thinking about that. And if you know what that might be, write it down, maybe even schedule it or have it like somewhere on a post-it note and then uh, do it, right? Because we just talked about how this isn't, isn't necessarily about timeouts, right? It's more of an investment. So think about it that way. So thanks again for listening to our episode today. Uh, I want to remind you that next week is all about how to fuel your creativity with my guest, 
uh, Jeffrey Madoff, and I had a great conversation about this. Again, he did the commercials for Ralph Lauren and Victoria's Secret and lots of other big brands. So you definitely want to check that out, how he comes with big ideas and creativity and what his process is like to, to film that and kind of thing and then also create that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check out next week's episode. If you want to get all the links that we mentioned today in the show notes, then uh, be sure to go to theproductivityshow.com slash 368. Uh, Brooks, thanks for uh, being the co-host with me here today. And thanks again, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you next Productive Monday.